It was empire on a scale that has never been equaled. Mysterious, violent in the extreme, and endlessly inventive. Only one empire has survived for 4,000 years, China. All powerful emperors mobilized immense peasant armies for feats of engineering unparalleled in human history. A gilded tomb with rivers of flowing mercury. It's hard to believe that something like that could be purely the product of human labor. The world's longest canal. A naval fleet mightier than any that had ever put to sea. But none can compare to the monument that would change the face of the earth the Great Wall of China. This is the biggest project management in history. And yet, dynasty after dynasty, consumed by vanity and greed, would be toppled from power when the people rose up and oppression turned to destruction. At the dawn of civilization, the Chinese were there, and they are still here. Hello, I'm Peter Weller. When the Egyptians were building their pyramids, the Chinese already had sumptuous palaces for their kings. When Rome was planning its soaring aqueduct that would bathe its citizens and quench their thirst, the Chinese were redirecting an entire river by blowing up a mountain before gunpowder and building a dam that would irrigate thousands and thousands of acres of land and launch a population explosion the world had never seen. Four thousand years ago, Chinese civilization rose and spread across a vast area, one-third larger than the United States. But for centuries, China was in turmoil. Separate kingdoms battled for power and control. Conflict and combat ravaged the land. China was, as we think of it today, more or less, was made up of a number of states, all of which were fighting with one another for supremacy. The period was called the Warring States. By the third century BC, one kingdom emerged as the most powerful and the most ruthless a western province home to a hostile warlike people they were ambitious forbidding and determined to conquer and unite all seven kingdoms they were called the qin their unification of this vast land would create an empire like no other the world has ever seen the qin prospered in a region that was fertile and flat with access to prime trading routes like the famed Silk Road, connecting them to the farthest reaches of China and beyond. Over time, the Qin developed two critical military advantages over the other kingdoms. From neighboring nomads and barbarians, the Qin mastered horsemanship. Simultaneously, they also changed strategy for waging war. Until now, wars had been fought by small platoons of nobles riding in chariots. But the recent discovery of new metal forging technologies led to mass production of weapons and the rise of a new type of warrior, the foot soldier. It was a time when the use of iron became much more widespread. So just at the same time as infantry armies, which tended to be much larger, came in, so it was possible to make more weapons. With this tactical breakthrough, the Qin launched an offensive to conquer all of China. As one kingdom after another fell, the Qin faced a new challenge, how to quickly produce enough food to fuel their now massive army. That responsibility fell to one man, his name was Li Bing, a Qin official who was one of the greatest hydraulic engineers of all time. Under his guidance, Chinese builders would construct a masterpiece of engineering. For centuries, the Ming River had tormented the Chinese people, causing winter droughts and summer floods. 
Now, Li Bing was determined to harness its raging waters. The centerpiece of his plan was a levee that would create a whole new waterway, a channel to control flooding, as well as to provide a water supply for desperately needed food production. But Li Bing had an enormous problem. Mount Jiang, standing directly in the path of his irrigation channel. He couldn't move the mountain, so he decided to carve a path for his new waterway straight through it. Long before the invention of gunpowder, it would have taken decades to cut a path through the mountain by manual labor using only hammers and drills. The Qin military demanded more immediate results, forcing Li Bing to devise a bold new technology. He'd let the forces of nature do the heavy lifting for him. First, heating the rocks through controlled fires, then dousing them with cold water. This caused the boulders to crack into small pieces that could be carted away. Eight years after he started, Li Bing had blasted an irrigation channel straight through the mountain. Now he had to construct the enormous levee that would divert the waters of the Min into the new irrigation channel. Thousands of workers were brought to the site, working with nothing but muscle and chisels, carving out the earth. Remarkably, Li Bing designed a levee that could regulate the raging waters of the Min according to the season. In summer, more water could be driven to the irrigation channel to prevent flooding along the river. In winter, the proportions were reversed, directing more water into the river to avoid drought. By irrigating a vast stretch of Qin territory, Li Bing's levee triggered a massive population boom, and the military had a new base to launch attacks into enemy territory. The state of Qin was evolving into a powerhouse. And he used the wealth created by agriculture and the power created by the military to unite all of China. In 247 BC, that job was left to the Qin's new emperor, a 13-year-old named Ying Zheng. The young ruler assumed the throne with his mother acting as queen dowager. But Ying Zheng came to power in a palace teeming with enemies, already plotting his demise. Knives were being sharpened. At the top of the list of those who wanted him dead was his own mother. She now had a lover and two new sons she wanted on the throne. At the age of 22, Ying Zheng discovered her plot to have him killed. He had his mother banished and his stepbrothers and her lover killed. His authority was now absolute. With his throne secured, Ying Zheng sent his armies out to finish the job of unifying all of China. Only one kingdom stood in the way. They were called the Chu. In 238 BC, the Qin launched an epic all-out war on the Chu in a conflict that raged doggedly on for 15 years. Finally, in 223 BC, they too raised the banner of surrender. The last great obstacle to the Qin conquest of China had been crushed. The Qin supremacy over the Chu is they were able to organize their armies in a much more efficient way than had been done before. The Qin dream of empire was complete. China was unified and at peace. Now a true emperor, Ying Zhang needed a royal name. He would come to be known throughout China and around the world simply as Xi Huangdi, the first emperor.